It's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and this week I put a 220 volt hookup, 50 amp to charge outside the 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. Following along this week, I'm doing a variety of videos. I've charged with 110, I've talked about how long a range I get, all this kind of information. I wanna give you real world information, not just what they post, but real world on how long it takes to charge. And as best I can do, figure out charging costs. A little bit weird on that math at the moment, to be honest with you. I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but let me, tell you more about this truck and what I did today. And if first time on your channel, welcome. I do trucks and SUVs only. I do uh, lots of uh, heavy duties, compact, everything. And now with everything going battery electric or moving that direction, let's talk more about electric vehicles. I can tell you what, this truck, I've been stopped, oh, at least four or five times in town. People want to talk about this truck. In the comments, people want to bash on it a little bit, but I'm telling you, people in person have been blown away. I've done a lot of test drives with it, and there's a lot to talk about. So let's talk about first, the 220 charging. So this is a big question for a lot of people. How do you charge them up? And so we put a box in here, some ENT conduit going across. They call it, it's called ENT. You see in here, I have the plug. And this is a four, It's a NEMA 14-50 plug. It's a special end. It doesn't work with your dryer. Trust me, I tried that. It was yesterday's video. <laughs> it's not the same. It's a, it's a, four, it's a, it's a 220 plug with a round and two or three inserts into it. So it's not a dryer plug and you definitely need the right outlet for it. And so we have this going across. Now this is number six gauge wire. So it's 220 six gauge wire. Um, I got 75 feet for like $344, something like that. It's 12, three, cause you have to have, I have two powers, a ground and a neutral. So the plugs are two power, ground neutral is how it shows up in there. So I plugged it over here and it runs over here and you plug it in. And so this, I'll show you downstairs, it runs right into my basement. That's actually the top of my ceiling for my basement. I'll tell you more about that, but we'll open the door here. And when you open the door, the graphics show on the screen. Da, 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 da. Okay, come on graphics. Okay, then it turns on and then there you go. So I have 84 miles of range, 37%. And it should be 100% by 5.03 a.m. Wednesday. Right now, it is Tuesday at 3.49. So it'll take all overnight to charge 100%. Now the kicker is, a lot of times, you don't charge 100% because it degrades the battery faster when you do that. So in this case, um, I'm charging 100% only because the fleet company who's gonna pick this up and swap me vehicles, our agreement's 100% because right now, we're trying to figure out this technology too, along with you guys. So yeah, that's gonna close there. I'm thinking I may do a box like here, like a old breaker box and put the cord eventually wrap it up in here and, and close it off. So it looks like it's powering that. I haven't quite decided. There's a lot of questions about that cord and been questions coming up this week from my friends. What if somebody walks up, unplugs it, takes that cord and drives off? I'm down a couple hundred bucks. That's, that's a problem. I don't know how to, I mean, I could put a camera there but I'm thinking about different ways I can make it incognito and hide it. If, well, as long as you didn't watch this video, <laughs> they don't know what I'm up to. But let's go in the house. So, the fantastic house. But I want to show you the, the power. Okay. Oh, the light on. Okay. So, let's talk about this. And right up here, that is my power going out. We drilled through the floor. You can see the line there. The 12-3 goes over here. I have staples in to hold it away from the water and kind of hold it in place. They go all the way down through here. And luckily, I did this basement myself, so keep your comments down. But luckily, I did the drop ceiling. So that way, if I had to put cables in there, I could do it like this. So it made it a lot easier. So this cable comes over here and we can see it goes across like this, goes in here and we came out over here. And so I had my water lines there, electrical lines over there. We had the wire run over here, goes over here, comes down and it goes, I had to go underneath the box because all my top was covered with the, they had already used all those. Come inside, it's a Siemens box, and boom. 
here we have, I have 50 amps of service and I put a double breaker for 50 amps of service. Number six wire. And we looked it up again. <sighs> Licensed electrician helped me wire it. He's a master electrician. He actually worked for the city for a while. So he knows his stuff. And we did the, he looked up the wiring charts and how much power the, the six wire would hold and all kind of stuff. And, and I'll go through and I got a little, I got a little stapling to do and stuff like that. A little more cleanup work to do. But um, one of the questions I had was 50 amps of service. Whether that's going to be enough. Ford offers a couple different varieties. They offer the ch mobile charger I have that does 50 amp service. They also offer a, a bigger box, offers 60 amps of service. So I don't know. The, kind of the game is how many amps do you go? A lot of my friends did 40 amps, but I just feel like 50 was 50, 50 amp breaker was a few dollars more. So why not go with that? And the six gauge wire will hand, handle 50 amps um, of service. So that's what I went with. Again, uh, the wiring is, we did 75 feet to go all the way out through there and to go up top. We put the conduit in. We had the Romax clamp, cable clamps. We had the clamps up top. We had the breaker. We had the outlet with the box. The, the box outlet out there comes as one piece. So you get the box plus the outlet all in one package. Pretty cool. And it was like, I think it was 550 with taxes to do all that kind of stuff. And because that electrician helping me and I took him to lunch, um, it was a hell of a lot cheaper than paying an electrician. If I paid an electrician, it'd probably be another thousand bucks on top of that. So this is an easy install, really. It's not quite as easy. So if a lot of people around here have their breaker box in the garage, that's going to be simple. You just breaker box in the garage, you poke a hole, you get the wiring over, and you put your plug in. That's simple. In my case, I had to run the wire from the basement all the way out there, so that made it a little bit more difficult. And then in some people's housing... They have older housing. So like in the area, in the countryside, we have people that have, um, well, they have, they have hundred amp services and that's going to get more expensive because you have to increase your amperage, change your breaker box, bring in more power. So those installs can be a little bit more expensive. So you got to check what kind of install, like I said, what kind of room you have in your box, how much amp service you have coming in your house and then figure out where you put the plug. Now I put my plug also on the outside of my house. There's some questions about that. And the reason why I did that was because I can't really charge inside my garage because they're throwing the cable all, all the way over the other side, number one. Number two, the Ford Lightning doesn't fit in the garage. And I do a lot of trucks and trucks and SUVs and the bigger SUVs and trucks don't fit in my garage. So this idea, I'm gonna close the garage door and charge overnight with my EV. Well, if it fits, <laughs> you can. In my case, it doesn't fit. So I opted for an outside plug. Now, where I put that plug, I could always tap in the back side of the wall, make that an inside plug if I wanted to, if I just, you know, move the wiring around a little bit. But yeah, that's my current plan is outside plug. Is that a good idea? Time will tell. There's a lot to learn about these new trucks and a lot of the learning adjustments that happen with EVs. In this case, it's one more learning adjustment. Yeah. So I'll have a lot more of this truck. I did a road trip with it. I have lots of videos coming out of this truck. So I think it's really interesting. And again, most people I've been driving this truck around with have been very impressed and I've gotten stopped at least three times uh, from people who want to go check it out. I've given test drives too. So if you're one of those people, hi, eh, how are you doing again? Because I gave a lot of test drives, but yeah, just information there on what you have to do on getting the power to the outside, the more power, because you can do 110. And as you saw the 110 video, it took me four or five days. Now this will take me basically overnight in the morning. I'm not leaving tonight. So by tomorrow morning, I'll hundred percent charge, which is about uh, I'm going to think, I think in real world, it's about 280 miles of range. Ford says 320, but it depends on your driving situation. I'll probably get 325 drove on town all the time, but highways, stuff like that doesn't really work out so far, but there you go. I'll have more information more tomorrow when it's, it's fully charged. <laughs> all right. There you go. For uh, more, check us out on pickuptrucktalk.com and subscribe, stick around. We have a lot of cool videos coming. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.